Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, today I want to get into an amendment series and just kind of go over all the different types that are out there that's going to help benefit your garden, whether it's in containers, uh, whether it's in raised beds, or literally just anything outdoors. Um, today I wanted to kind of go over the, the main ones I always hear and talk about, bone meal and blood meal. <clears throat> Start with bone meal. Now, bone meal can be derived from different aspects, whether it's cows, pigs, fish, you know, that, that's where it's going to come from. It's just literally just grounded up, dried out bones that are high in phosphorus and they're high in calcium. Now, the bone meals take a little bit longer to break down. Uh, it usually takes, before they're completely broke down in your garden, about four months. Uh, so just keep in mind, now when we add bone meal to either our raised beds, our container gardens, anything like that, I would do it right when you plant those plants. <clears throat> so let's say we're doing a raised bed. Uh, early in the spring, uh, as soon as I'm mixing up and, and retailing all of my soils, that's when I'm going to add in my bone meal. <clears throat> Uh, in a bone meal, um, you're going to add, it's about 10 pounds per 100 square feet. Uh, so even keep in mind, even break it down to, um, let's do one pound per 10 square feet, just to make it a little bit more easier on doing your numbers. Um, now, like I said, this is a slow release phosphorus. Uh, so your plants only take up small amounts of phosphorus early in their vegetative growth, but more during flower growth. So this is gonna work great with your tomatoes, with your peppers, with your cannabis plants, anything that's going to fruit and flower, that's what's going to increase the size of those fruits and flowers. Um, it's hard to burn your plants, uh, so with this being a slow release phosphorus and calcium as well, you don't. You, it's harder to overdo it with this, unlike blood meal. Uh, we'll get into blood meal in a minute, but it's very easy to burn your plants with blood meal just because it's more readily available. Uh, so with the bone meal, since it takes so long to break down, only small parts of that are actually active at during that moment. So as they slowly break down, your plants are taking it up as it's available to your plants. So that's why this is one that is hard to overdo it. <clears throat> but also, I mean, I wouldn't throw, you know, 100 pounds per 100 square feet just to keep, you don't need that much in there. So blood meal, on the other hand, it is literally just dried blood. It's always from animals, whether it's cows, pigs, anything like that. They'll let it completely dry out into a powder form, and then you can use that because it will be organic into your garden. Now, it's a lot lower. Um, literally, if you're in a container, like I was saying, this stuff breaks down so fast, and it has high, high amounts of nitrogen, which nitrogen is great for your vegetative growth because that's what creates those large, bushy, very happy green leaves all in your garden. Now, let's say we're in a container uh, anywhere, you know, five, ten gallon containers inside, it's going to be one teaspoon per gallon of soil that you have there. That's what you would amend in the very beginning. Uh, now during flower, nitrogen is not necessary. Uh, you want to more focus on your phosphoruses and potassiums and calciums and things like that. So blood meal is going to be added to the beginning. Uh, the beginning of your raised bed, same way when you're adding your bone meal, you can add both of those together in your raised bed and they're going to break down. Like I said, the blood meal breaks down faster, so now you can apply blood meal once every month to month and a half, uh, whether it's containers, whether it's raised beds, anything like that, because that's when you want that nitrogen growth. Um, let's say we're doing, so containers one teaspoon per gallon of soil, raised beds is one cup per 20 square feet. So you can tell it takes a lot less of the blood meal than it does this bone meal just because you can burn your plants. I, I've seen it happen. Blood meal is very, very easy to overdo. It's something that I rate at a teaspoon per gallon. I go in extremely low and you can add it as needed. Since it breaks down so fast, if you're seeing deficiencies, you hit it right there when you see it with that blood meal. Now, one benefit I've seen of the blood meal in your raised beds is it does help to repel some animals uh, like rabbits and moles and deers and things like that because they sense that there's a dead animal around and they want to stay away. So that is kind of a natural way with feeding your plants and help keeping some of those natural predators away as well. Now one thing that it can do though is it can attract those pests that are attracted to that smells like possums and raccoons. Dogs love it. Even my dog, when she smells it, she'll get in there and start digging. So that's one thing that you need to get in early, help it break down, and it'll keep some pests away, but it does attract some other pests. But it's a great organic nitrogen amendment. Now, there are other 
if, if you're not a diehard blood blood meal fan, there are other ways of adding nitrogen. I'm going to get into that in a, a few more videos. Um, alfalfa meal is a really good one, and uh, feather meal as well. Now those get away from the blood, and they will add nitrogen, but it doesn't add as much nitrogen as the blood meal. Blood meal is the highest natural occurring amendment <clears throat> that's organic that has the highest amounts of nitrogen. So. Case in point, what we'll do with these guys, we're going to add them both together early spring or right in the beginning of your um, indoor gardening. You can mix it in with your mixes before you start to uh, plant your cuttings, your seeds, and, and things like that. Uh, you can get away with more of the bone meal because it takes longer to break down, uh, usually about four months before it's completely broken down. Blood meal is readily available. I mean, it takes three to five days and you've got nitrogen directly to your plants. Uh, but both of these are great organic amendments that can be added at the beginning of your growing seasons to help create better results in your garden. All right, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Y'all have a good one.